Hello there. Welcome to the chapter on metals and non-metals. Today we'll be learning their physical properties and their chemical properties. How they react with acids and bases, what are their applications in several industries and more. So are we ready? Let's get started. The earth is full of things. Solids, gases, liquids, right? And all these or any of these primarily fall into either the class of metals or the class of non-metals. Like I told you a while back, these metals and non-metals have existed since the formation of Earth. Let us start off by understanding the physical properties of these two classes. If you have a sibling and you both are completely opposite of each other, then you would be something like metals and non-metals. These two classes exhibit completely different physical properties and let me list them for you. At room temperature, all metals, with the exception of mercury, are in solid state. And if they are subjected to high temperatures and other specific treatments, they can be drawn into wires and sheets. For example, you must have seen the aluminium foil that your mom uses to wrap your sandwiches in. That is a metal drawn into a thin sheet. You must have also seen electrical wires that is metal in its wire form. And the property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets is called malleability. Similarly, their ability to be drawn into wires makes them ductile. Materials like coal and lead do not possess these characteristics and hence they are classified as non-metals. Also, non-metals can be solids, liquids or gases. For example, carbon, sulfur and iodine are solid non-metals. Bromine is the only liquid non-metal and all gases are non-metals in their gaseous state. Metals are generally hard and must be subjected to high temperature to change their form except for sodium and potassium which can be easily cut with a knife. Non-metals are generally hard and brittle except for diamond. Also metals are generally lustrous that is they have a shine while non-metals generally do not have a shine of their own. Okay, let me tell you something. Have you ever seen wooden bells in a temple? No, I don't think so. Why is that? Because wood will not make a ringing sound on being struck hard, but a metal will. If you have a wooden box and a metal box, and uh, say you are blindfolded, but by hitting them with a stick, wouldn't you be able to tell one from the other? Yes, you would, because of the sounds they release. This property of metals producing ringing sounds makes them sonorous. A property that non-metals lack. Now let's see if these two classes differ a lot when it comes to their chemical properties as well. Let's understand how metals react with oxygen. Now metals like sodium, potassium and magnesium are highly reactive even at room temperature. They react with oxygen to form oxides. Hence they cannot be stored exposed to air and have to be placed under oil like kerosene. So let us look at some of the reactions of metals with oxygen. Sodium reacts with oxygen to form sodium oxide. Magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. If you recall from class 7, you had performed an activity of burning a magnesium ribbon in the air and you had learned how magnesium and oxygen react to form the metal oxide. So let me show you how these reactions pan out. First, with sodium. Four molecules of sodium react with one molecule of oxygen to form two molecules of sodium oxide. Now what about magnesium? Well, magnesium also reacts with oxygen in the same way. 
two molecules of magnesium react with one molecule of oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Now moving on, let us now look at how non-metals react with oxygen. Like metals react with oxygen to form metal oxides, non-metals react with oxygen to form non-metallic oxides. Let's start off with a very simple example of carbon. Carbon reacts with oxygen to give carbon dioxide. Similarly, sulfur burns in oxygen to release a gas called sulfur dioxide, which has a very pungent smell and is suffocating when inhaled. Now we saw that metal oxides were basic in nature. Let's find out what is the nature of non-metallic oxides and for that, let's perform a small experiment. Take a small amount of powdered sulfur in a deflagrating spoon, which looks like this and is also known as a combustion spoon. Now, heat the powder. If a deflagrating spoon is not available, Another option is to take a metallic cap of any bottle and wrap a metallic wire around it and give it this shape. As soon as the sulphur starts burning, put the spoon into a gas jar or a glass tumbler and cover the tumbler with the lid so that the gas does not escape. Remove the spoon after some time and add a small quantity of water into the tumbler and replace the lid. Shake the tumbler well and then check the solution with red and blue litmus paper. You will see that the red litmus remains unchanged, but the blue litmus turns red. And this means that the solution is acidic in nature. I think it would be a good juncture to break the segment. And when we meet next time, we will learn about displacement reactions and practical and real life uses of metals and non-metals. So join me then as we cross the finish line of this chapter on metals and non-metals. Bye for now. Tutor me for more amazing video lectures. Download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.